How's it going guys? I have recently gotten towards the end of A Realm Reborn in Final Fantasy 14 and I have been playing it quite a lot and this is a game that when I first started out there was quite a few things that was pretty confusing. There was some things that I was just completely and utterly clueless about and then along the way there's been things that I've picked up as well and I wish I'd known these from the get go. And like I said, as I am not quite at the end of A Realm Reborn yet, there is still a lot for me to learn about this game and I'm still learning quite a lot every single time that I do hop on and play. However, the things that I have learned, I feel like these could be quite useful for any people that are starting the game, especially now that the trial does include the first expansion as well and you can get all the way up to level 60 without having to get a subscription fee. I feel like a lot of people are going to be trying this game out and I hope this video does help you out in some way, even if it's just the odd tip here and there that does actually help. So this is going to be kind of like a tips video and it's going to be done in kind of like a list format as well. I hope it does help. If it does, make sure to leave a like on the video so it gets suggested to other people as well. And of course, if you are new, then do subscribe to the channel. I'll be making more of these probably in the future. As I learn stuff about the game, I will pass them on to other people as well. And hopefully other people can learn stuff and pass that on to anyone they bump into in a game as well. Anyway, let's uh, just jump straight into the first one. Okay, so number one is something that you probably have heard people say already, and if you have put any sort of research into this game, you've probably heard it at some point. However, it's something that I now, after doing it wrong myself to begin with, cannot stress enough to any new players. When I started playing this game, I skipped cutscenes, I didn't pay attention to the story, and people literally just said, why are you skipping cutscenes? Make sure to pay attention to the story. That is a huge part of the game and it is really, really good. Now, I've never ever been interested in stories in MMOs. It's just not really caught my attention enough in the past. And I have played quite a few MMOs as well. And I've never really sat and then just wanted to watch all the cutscenes. However, being told this over and over again, I thought there must be something that I am missing. So I decided to get onto the cutscenes, which thankfully wasn't very far into the game. I'd only missed maybe a few of them at this point and everybody was right you literally should pay attention to every single main story cutscene uh, and just sort of keep up with the story because it is incredibly good and while you could skip the cutscenes you will have a different experience playing this game if you do pay attention to it and it will be for the best you are gonna get really involved in it you'll find yourself reading every bit of text and it'll just sort of draw you in and even if you were the sort of person like me who has never been interested in stories and MMOs before I would say there's probably a really good chance of you shock, being shocked by it and just really enjoying it. So make sure to give the story a really decent try even if that's not really your sort of thing because there's a really good chance that it will change the game for the better for you. Tip number two is for you guys out there kind of like me who just don't have all that much time to play each and every single day but you really want to get the most out of it when you do. Now, when you're doing the main story quest, there's kind of a little bit of a spoiler along this, but not, not really. Um, you are going to have dungeons that are locked behind the main story quest. So to progress further on, you will have to clear a dungeon and that will be part of the story. You'll get cutscenes and stuff in that. However, as someone like myself who doesn't have maybe two to three hours every time I want to go and play, queue times in this game for dungeons can either be incredibly quick or they can take a hell of a long time. Now, the thing that makes this change and the thing that affects it the most, in my opinion or my experience, is basically down to which class you are actually playing in the game. Now, of course, one character can play all of the classes, you just have to level them up individually. When I initially started playing, the class that I picked was the Arcanist. Now, this was because I wanted to go into the Scholar and become a healer. Now, I thought that the Arcanist would be a base healing class, however it was actually a base DPS class. This issue they brought to me was basically when I queued for dungeons I had to queue as a DPS. Now there is nothing wrong with playing as a DPS in this game and I'm sure there is a lot of classes that I haven't played yet that are incredibly fun and that's not what this sort of tip's about. However, queuing for a dungeon as a DPS will increase your wait time by a lot compared to queuing as a tank or a healer. This is because a lot of players do play the DPS classes and you will be putting a queue out of those players to get into the dungeons. So you'll be waiting on healers, you'll be waiting on tanks, but not only that, you'll have maybe, depending on what time of day it is, up to 20, I've seen even 30 other DPS classes sat in front of me in a queue and I had to wait for those to get into the dungeon before I could. Like I said, this isn't an issue if you really just want to play DPS your class is still absolutely fine to play it just might take a little bit longer to queue into dungeons 
But if you don't have all of that extra time and you really wouldn't mind playing a healer or a tank anyway, then maybe consider picking one up as your first class because this could save you a lot of time on waiting for that. As a healer, I literally get an instant queue pop every single time. As soon as I click join queue, the, the game throws me into a queue pretty much straight away. Now this may fall off later on as I get further into the game, I'm not too sure yet, but so far it's been instant and that's absolutely awesome. Before we move on to the next tip, I just wanted to get you guys into the comment section because I would love to hear any thoughts or any extra tips that maybe I've missed out and you think new players could be interested in knowing. Then get down in the comment section, make sure to share that because you never know when someone who is fairly new to the game is scrolling through that comment section, finds your tip and you may have just saved them a hell of a lot of time or taught them something that they did not know. Also, I'm still learning this game as well, so any tips that you do share would probably help me out along the way as well. Anyway, I really do appreciate it. Let's jump on to number three. Number three is something that I didn't actually find out about until maybe about my third or fourth day playing this game. And I wish I'd known from literally level one as soon as I'd got into it because it was quite useful. This tip came to me from some random player who must have noticed that I was new and messaged me to see if I needed any help with anything and then they gave me the tip of eating food. Now why would I need to eat food? Surely at this level I don't need to get any sort of buffs to help me kill weak level mobs and stuff but so why would I want to eat some food? Food will give you a small experience buff for a certain amount of time. This will help you level up quicker and unlock different skills and just sort of progress your character a lot quicker than it would in the first place. The experience buff isn't a huge amount, but if you keep this buff up and keep going over a certain, like a long duration of time, this is all going to add up over time and it will save you a few hours probably on getting through some levels. Now, this is just gonna help you stay ahead of the level curve while you are leveling up and you'll be able to sort of kill off monsters and not struggle your way through levels. And it's definitely something that I was glad to be told about. So I thought, he passed it on to me, he helped me understand that this was a thing because nothing else did actually tell me about that. So I figured I would pass it on to anybody else who didn't know yet. A lot of you guys may have already known this because it is rewards given from quests and stuff like that. But if you didn't, then I hope it is something that becomes quite useful for you. Okay, so moving on to number four. This is going to be something that <laughs> I spent quite a lot of time doing and I wish that I had done it differently. And that's why I decided this is probably a big one to pass on to you guys as well. Especially as a new player, it may be something that you look at and think, ah, do I really have to do this? So basically, when you start getting out on your quests and you're leaving the main city that you start in, you're going to be traveling quite a distance. You're going to be going from zone to zone and your next quest line is going to be quite far away sometimes. And it might be at this point that you start noticing that you can teleport to different Aetherite locations that you have activated. But if you do click on the teleport, you will notice that it does seem to cost quite a lot. You may notice, depending on how far away you are, I believe it's how it works, it can charge like 200 for this distance, or it could charge 500, 600, it can go really quite high. Now, you may be looking at that as a new player thinking, that's a lot. Do I really want to be spending that much money? I don't know what money's worth. I don't know what I'm going to be using my money on. And I kind of want to save it just in case. Now that's what I had the thought of. And that is exactly what I did to begin with. I used to run everywhere. I just I would just walk without my mount because I hadn't got that far yet. Walk all the way to the next zone that I did have the teleport location activated for. But I didn't want to spend that money. However, as I said, I didn't know whether it was worth teleporting anywhere in the first place. So eventually I did just ask someone who happened to teleport into somewhere that I was looking at the cost and stuff at. And they told me that, to be honest, it's just better to just teleport to the closest location to your quest, hand that quest in and just continue on. Eventually, even if you are doing this, your money will be piling up quite a lot and you won't notice it too much. Before we move on to tip number five, our final tip for this video, and probably my biggest one to share with you all, I just wanted to throw another reminder in for you guys to leave a like on this video if you do enjoy it. And of course, if you are new to my channel and you're just finding it maybe through this video as well, I have made other Final Fantasy stuff and I will be making more in the future. So do subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you in the comments in other videos as well. And even join my Discord, there'll be a link in the description. 
Well, that brings us on to tip number five. This is probably the best tip that I do have for a lot of new players. And to be honest, maybe I shouldn't have left it till the end. But if you did make it this far, then that is absolutely awesome. And hopefully this tip doesn't disappoint a lot of you new players. It is very, very focused on new players to the game and maybe people who are coming here from other MMOs as well. So that is going to be the... If you have any questions, if you have seem stuck, if you don't understand something in the game, do not hesitate to ask other players for help. People in this game are incredibly helpful when it comes to giving advice or helping you understand your class or even just figuring out what sort of thing you're stuck with. Recently, I did make a video talking about my thoughts on the community in this game and while there was plenty of comments on that explaining that there is a toxic side to this game as there is with almost any MMORPG out there, the community, I still stand by my point that they are incredibly helpful, incredibly supportive, and they are very, very positive people. If you are willing to put time into this game and learn it, then they will, nine times out of ten, be absolutely willing to spend the time to help you out as well. They really, really love their game, and if there's any way to help somebody else enjoy it as well, then they seem to be right in there helping out, and that is absolutely awesome. So don't hesitate to ask for help. Don't worry about maybe someone thinking that you're not worth the time because there's a good chance that the very next first person that you speak to will be happy to answer your questions, maybe even invest some time into teaching you how to play your class, all these sort of things, and there's literally no problem with you asking that. It doesn't make you any worse at the game. If anything, you're going to come out of it with a little bit of advice, maybe another tip from somebody else, and that's going to help you improve at the game as well. So that is something that I am I use quite a lot. I, I literally, if there's anything that I'm unsure about, I will ask people from my Discord, or I will just ask people in-game, and there's always a really good answer waiting for me on the other end of that question and it saves a lot of time it saves a lot of sort of trying to work out what the problem is with anything and it just helps you enjoy the game a hell of a lot so don't hesitate to ask for help it will help and you will probably even make friends out of it as well that being said i do have a discord server which there will be a link to in the description as mentioned earlier on and there is quite a lot of people now building up in there that play this game and are very experienced as well and they are always happy to help on tips and stuff like that too so if you feel like you would like to join in on that whether you are a person who knows a lot about the game and is happy to help other people out or whether you are a new player who thinks every now and again you know playing with someone who has some experience or just asking a question could help you out then get in there and you are obviously more than welcome. Well, tip number five is finished, and that pretty much brings us to the end of this video. I didn't want to throw a hell of a lot of tips out there, just because it, I feel like it could overwhelm some of you brand new players to this game, and that's kind of the target audience that this video is aimed at, seeing as I literally was a brand new player not that long ago, and I wouldn't want to go ahead and start sharing loads of advice on how to play the game just yet, until I have a full understanding of that. However, once I have learned more about the game, and I have more tips to share, then I will happily make another video and share those tips for anybody else who is getting into the game or is leveling up and is in the low to mid sort of levels. And as we also progress throughout the game, then I'll make more and more and eventually, hopefully, we'll even reach tips for the end game players. Who knows, one day maybe that will happen. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and of course, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I have said this before, I will say it again. If you are new, subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you in any comment sections in the next any videos coming up. However, like I said, that is the end of the video. I really do appreciate you watching as always and I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys. Bye.